The BA2 COVID variant is driving cases higher throughout Europe. Should we be preparing for a new wave here in the U.S.? Let's ask Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He's the former FDA commissioner and a CNBC contributor. He's also on the boards of Pfizer and Illumina. Dr. Gottlieb, it's great to have you back. Just anecdotally speeding, speaking, after a very quiet six weeks, suddenly every time I turn around, someone's popping up with COVID, but we're seeing almost no economic impact. How do you foresee this all playing out? Yeah, like, look, I think this is going to be, be a real test of whether or not we're able to cope with this while still protecting the vulnerable. And there's probably things that we can be doing right now to try to get better uh, protection into vulnerable Americans. For example, if I was a governor right now, I'd be making a very hard push to make sure people in nursing homes are vaccinated and up to date with their vaccines uh, and have been boosted recently, heading into what's likely to be a spike in infections as we enter into the spring. I think there's going to be continued declines heading into the summer. Prevalence right now is very low. We're at about nine cases per 100,000 people per day. We haven't been at these low levels since last June. But we'll likely see some wave of infection as B2 becomes more prevalent, as mitigation has been lifted around the country. And as a result of some declining immunity from people who were infected a while ago or boosted a while ago, the good news, the final point is, the good news is that we're seeing declines in Europe right now. Um, it's not really uh, a trend yet. There's not really a discernible trend, so we don't have enough data points to say that it's definitive. But if you look at the data in the U.K. and Germany right now, you are seeing cases come down on a week-over-week -week basis. And that could be an indication that the spikes that they've seen are starting to subside, which would be a good harbinger for us, too. It would sort of reaffirm this notion that this is likely to be, you know, sort of a mild wave of infection as we get into the spring and head towards the summer. So do you foresee, you know, everyone's just been lifting mandates, lifting mask mandates, lifting a lot of testing requirements and so forth. You know, do you expect any of that to be coming back? No, I wouldn't. Not, not if the um, outlook is that it's this B2 variant that's going to cause us some problems this spring as we head towards the summer. I mean, absent something new, a new variant that pierces the immunity that we've acquired from prior infection and from vaccination. There's nothing like that on the horizon. I mean, there's always a risk that something like that will emerge. That's probably a risk to the fall. But the near-term risk right now is just this continued uptick in cases as we lift the mitigation, people interact more. And as B2, which is a, which is a strain that's more contagious, becomes more prevalent. B2 is 30 to 50 percent more contagious. So people who've so far escaped Omicron, some percentage of them are going to be infected from this mini wave of infection. But this is li unlikely to be a major surge of infection based on what we're seeing in Europe right now. We're likely to see an uptick from where we are right now, but we're at very low levels. And I don't think that's going to be enough to change the policy prescription at this point. I don't think you're going to see governors and states and certainly the federal Schools, government slip yeah. back some of the restrictions. The only thing you might see is an extension of the mask mandate on public transportation. Remember, that's set to expire in mid-April. If we're in the middle of a bump up of infections, I suspect the federal government may be reluctant to lift it at that point. They may extend it another couple of weeks.